Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my smallish collection of books on classic film posters. Always loved film posters, never really had the room to display any, but looking at them in this book form I think is actually something quite special. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. OK, then, so we're starting off with this one, Film Posters of the 1940s. And uh, this is part of a series of books. Um, the actual first volume of this, which is still in print, in fact, most of these are still in print now, um, is Film Posters of the 1930s. And they go through each decade up as far as I can see, up until the 1990s. And then there's a few sort of specials on various genres like science fiction and horror and things like that um so this is a great one this one is in hardback but they were published in hardback and paperback when they first got released and uh, they range from like early, late 90s to the early 2000s um, as i said they're still in print um and the prices do vary and you might even be able to find some second hand uh, but this particular one here is uh, the 1940s and um we've got quite a few to look through so we'll fly through and um well, we'll just soak up the imagery because there's so much good stuff to see in uh, in these photo in these pictures here, and uh, they're not all um, uh, English language. Some of them are foreign posters as well. And uh, generally, it will say so. This one here is to have or to have not. Um, 1945. It says it's the US one, and it gives you the original dimensions as well, which is quite sort of handy. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't a lot from the 1930s, I guess, that I would have really enjoyed. Perhaps some towards the tail end of the 1930s. But it's fantastic when we look through these. As you'll see, the style of artwork is going to change so much from what we're seeing here now, these very, very early ones. So many classic stars here. Rita Hayworth, Orson Welles, of course. Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, to own these Norman, early Norman Rockwell, to own these posters as originals, you're talking a lot of money now, aren't you? I mean, you, you really would be. These are a fortune. I love original movie posters. And when we had the, uh, the shop in the 90s, we had a fair few through our hands, 80s and 90s posters we really did even some 70s and a few 60s ones in actual fact i remember we had the magnificent seven and we had uh towering inferno i remember we had a fair few bond ones as well quite a lot of bond ones but it's a really nice thick paper it's a gorgeous book to, to just lose yourself in As I said, if, if they know it, they do sort of say who the artist was as well. Great, aren't they? Very, very nice. The red shoes. These universal ones, these are great, aren't they? I, I seem to remember I've got some small prints of these, including that one. Um, and some of the Sherlock Holmes ones as well. There's like, I don't know, A3 prints in like a plastic sleeve. Yeah, there's a couple of the uh, Basil Rathbone ones. I haven't got either of those two. It's a different one I've got, but it doesn't look like they've got it here. It's an early Hitchcock. We'll see a lot more Hitchcock and a lot more James Bond later on. That one there for the Grapes of Wrath. It's a wonderful life. Well, there we are. So that was the 1940s. Very, very nice indeed. Now, the next one, logically, carries on with the 1950s. But this copy's in softback, so it's not quite as glorious in the dimensions, um, but it's still 
you know, you're going to get the, the feel for it here. So let's fly straight in. And uh, still feeling like the 1940s at the moment. And then suddenly, and these are printed in Croix Glory throughout the 1950s. So these ones we're looking at here are from 1950 itself. They're not like dotted around from the 1950s. They are all in that chronological order, which is a great way of doing it. See, for me, I like something like that. It's like a busy poster. There's lots to look at and lots to study. And of course, in a lot of cases, um, the movie posters would be used on the, the book adaption, like the paperback adaptation, you know, in a lot of cases. Elizabeth Taylor when they're for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Fantastic. But yeah, I, I seem to get, you know, my love of movies really kicks in from the 50s and 60s, I think, in my sorts of 50s, 60s and 70s. That's my, my main period for classic movies and movies that I love to watch that have like been restored onto uh, high quality, like Blu-ray prints. I love watching old films, the films that I've seen a lot that are now looking just terrific with a 1080 print. I mean, just love it. I love these as well. What a great poster that is for a rear window. I don't remember seeing that one before. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Absolute classics. Yeah, another one there. Soul Bass designed that. See, the Penguin paperback of that uses that same sort of Soul Bass logo there. James Dean. Amazing, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful, beautiful artwork. I mean, I find books of movie posters as fun to look through as books of books of books, you know. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature walks among us. Oh, the B fifties science fiction. I mean, that it's just so iconic, isn't it? Absolutely iconic. War of the Worlds. And brilliant. Oh, Page of the Body Snatchers. What a great, great poster that is as well. Oh, so many good ones. That's the uh, hammer, isn't it? The first Dracula. Christopher Lee. Oh, I love that one as well. Man in a White Suit. A great Alec in this movie. European ones here, war ones here. This is 1956-ish, uh, 57. The Searchers. What a western that is! One of my favourite westerns of all, and my favourite um, John Wayne movie. Just looks incredible. That's exact example of um of a classic movie that's uh, been given the restoration treatment and now looks a million dollars just superb the searchers wow look at these these are japanese throne of blood hidden fortress of course there's bound to be films that you'd like them to see which aren't included here but i guess they can't show them all Yeah, there we are, the Elvis ones, King Creole, Jailhouse Rock, brilliant, and that brought Brando there, wowee. Anyway, that was the 1950s, good stuff. So the 60s is in paperback again. Here we are, and this was, uh, what a decade the 60s was really, wasn't it? I mean, it really, really was, just so many things came to pass. Now this one was published in 1997. Um, they didn't publish them chronologically, like starting with the earliest ones. They did jump around a bit. But uh, here we are, Doctor Strangelove. 
bit more of an introduction here as well. Cool hand Luke. Oh, the graduate, yes. Now, this is 1967, so this doesn't, this book uh, immediately doesn't appear to be in order. It is also all over the 60s, but maybe that will give it a better flow, a bit more of a, a variation, as it were. These are all um, Steve McQueen movies, so they sort of themed those together with the Cincinnati Kid, the original Thomas Crown Affair, and uh, Love with the Proper Stranger. I watched the Cincinnati Kid quite recently, and I was amazed at how good it was. It really, really was. Ah, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn there. Superb. Cool hand, Luke, there's Paul Newman there. That's another great film, wasn't it? Cool Hand Luke. Oh, and The Hustler. Never seen that one. Fast Eddie Felsen. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's in 1969. That's a great film I've not seen in a long time. Ah, uh, wow, look at that. So that's the Italian, Good, the Bad and the Ugly. And it's got the three, are they like one sheets there? Wow, wow, wow. Brilliant. Midnight Cowboy. Blow up. Italian. That's not a bad film. Yeah, some great design here. The trip. The head. Yeah. Very much of the day, aren't they, these? Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. <laughs> Girl on a Motorcycle. That's the French, wasn't it? Mary and Faithful. If. Jules Adrian. I like that they've got some of the, the best of like the overseas ones as well. Some of these European ones are just fantastic, aren't they? They really, really are. I'm doing my best to keep the uh, keep the whole book in picture. But it's quite difficult because they're huge. But I thought it would be a nice way to look through these because uh, if you're thinking of picking some up or getting some as a present, you might know which ones to uh, you might know which ones to keep an eye out for, or which ones you want to fancy. A bullet, isn't it? I don't recognise that one. Recognise that though. I bet that's an expensive poster to find, as an original, of course. Ocean's Eleven. Excellent. The Italian job. Look at that. What a poster. Look at that, Birdman of Alcatraz. It's not one I haven't seen for a while, actually. I'm glad that's got a double spread, because that's a great, great poster. This is that, actually, 2001. Raquel Welsh there from Fantastic Voyage. And that's Barbarella, look at that, the 60s Barbarella poster. Wow. And Doctor Who, well. They had to put that in, didn't they? Doctor Who one. Planet of the Apes. Obvious day. Ah, yes. Some great films here, aren't there? Oh, every one a winner, really. Fantastic. These are really great, aren't they? What good books. Goldfinger. I won't dwell on the Bonds because we've got like a, a Bond book of posters at the end, but look at these. Oh, that was the 67 Bond, wasn't it, with David Niven? And I said, we got a Bond. They did a, a book of Bond in this same sort of series. Um, so 
they did also they did the 30s to the 90s in this series but i've only got them as much as as far as the 80s and uh, the beatles films and um after that i because i did have a look online as i said they do appear to still be in print but after that they did um dedicated ones of science fiction horror i think exploitation movies um, and there's some I think there's maybe french films as well so there's quite a selection of ones to go through now this is my 70s one i think this was the first one i ever got and this one was published in 98 so i'm not sure but i seem to remember this is one of the earliest ones i got for the 1970s look at that get carter where's that for that's the american don't remember ever seeing that one before. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, some good films in, in the 1970s, wasn't there? Really good. Now the Dirty Harrys, yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely superb. Taking a Pelham, one, two, three, that's the, the British quad. Yeah, a lot of, the, a lot of the, the photos here, or the pictures rather, are from movies that I absolutely love. They're amongst my, my real favourites. Mad Max. Warriors, aren't they brilliant? Lots of classics here, I'm sure you'll agree. Early George Lucas there. I watched that one recently, actually. It was, it was really good to see. Um, Harrison Ford is hilarious in it. Really good, that was. Really enjoyable. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Jaws. That's of the Erwin Allen disaster films. More James Bond. Ah, Bruce Lee. Yeah, fantastic. Haven't watched a Bruce Lee movie in a while. The first Star Trek there. All by the same artist, Bob Peak. Did all of those there. That Apocalypse Now, Spy, Love Me, Star Trek. If they've got the deer hunter in here, that's a great film. That's one I watched recently. Oh, Foxy Brown, Pam Greer is Foxy Brown. <laughs> a few different Star Wars ones there as well. Manny Faltura, Alien. Oh, yeah, these are like the science fiction ones. Moving on to the westerns. Ah oh, yes, cabaret. Emmanuel. These are slightly, the slightly more adult ones. The comedies. Woody Allen's. It's a good film, isn't it? The conversation. It was. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola, I enjoyed that. A lot of people don't, not fans of it, but I enjoyed it. Look at that taxi driver, that's a great poster as well. I don't remember seeing that one before. Ah, oh, there's the deer hunter, yeah. Watched that recently, in the last couple of months. Just fantastic. Very, very good indeed. Great film, Give Me Shelter. Boy, oh boy, is that a great film. Brilliant. And a few horrors to round out the book. What a decade the 70s was, is what I can say to that. Brilliant stuff. Right, on with the next one. Okay, so this is the film posters of the 1980s. This is in softback again. And uh, once again, what a great, what a great decade to have a look through. Not much of an introduction, but then it's straight in with the, uh, 
the posters here and I think they really are reproduced in such a great way aren't they I think lots of classics here this is you know by now I was uh, well even from sort of the 76 77 I was uh, going to the uh, the pictures an awful lot being such a fan of the movies I would go whenever I had the chance so many great ones here aren't there it's like you know poster after poster is just full of classics But as I said, you can get all these books, they're still in print. And you know, if you go to Amazon, you can buy them brand new. Um, I looked a couple of them up and they were actually cheaper in hardback than in paperback. But they are, you are looking at 10 to 20 pounds a book for this particular series. All right. So just bear that in mind that they may not be quite as uh, cheap as you would like. But if you're into it, you know, I don't think there's anything better except, you know, potentially going online and looking them up. But you're not going to find them all in this sort of curated form. So uh, these are just really nice books to have on the shelf. related ones that's a good film not a lot of people know about that house of games very very good it's sort of a bit like um hustle they're like confidence tricks you say good it's good Vietnam trio there. The Rambos. Another great film, The Right Stuff. Another great, great movie. Oh, yes, Back to the Future. What a decade the 80s was, eh? As I said, there is a 90s one, which I think I will uh, try and track down because um, uh, it'd be nice to finish the whole series off, really, you know? But there we are. So that was the ones that were dedicated by decade. And then I've got two of their one-offs, which are the same sort of people behind these. So we got one on Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock poster art, and we got one on the James Bond posters. Um, so we'll do the Hitchcock one first. That's a big, big fan of Alfred Hitchcock. I think for me, it's the 50s and 60s were the decade that I loved the most. Um, but this was a great, great book. And um, it isn't quite just the posters. Uh, they do have uh, some things like the lobby cards um, and uh, paperback jackets as well, which is quite nice to see. But they are also in strict chronological order. So you can see Hitchcock's entire career, which is a great way to enjoy it, really, you know. You see, he worked with all the all the big names over the years. And as you can see, it's exactly the same sort of format, where the post is from, who it's by, where, you know, if it's a British, American or European one. But I'm a big Hitchcock fan, so I was really, really delighted to uh, to have this one which I've had for well, since it was published. But I said for me 
Hitchcock really kicks in. Well, around this sort of time, Rope is one which, in 1948, that's probably my first one that I really, really do. And of course, he used James Stewart an awful lot to me. Yeah, Strangers on a Train is good. And he was, Hitchcock was almost the biggest star as the stars actually in his movies, wasn't he, you know? Uh, Dial M for Murder here, Rear Window, that's my favourite. That is my favourite, I think, is Rear Window. <sighs> Just the business. But all of these are great. Vertigo is another good one. The Birds, of course, which we'll get to in a minute. Look at that Japanese one. For North by Northwest. That's great, wasn't it? That's 59. Now here's Psycho, which is 1960. And what a talent Hitchcock was, wasn't he? Here's The Birds, 63. Marnie, the one with Sean Connery, which isn't so good, unfortunately. Brilliant cast. You know, Tippi Hedren and Sean Connery, you think it can't go wrong. It's just not the greatest. Torn Curtain is excellent. Topaz, yeah. This is a famous cameo in that one as well. Frenzy. This is last few now, isn't it? Then we've got some of the lobby card sets, which are brilliant in their own right. You don't often see these, and they'll be a fortune. It's so nice to see the lobby cards, but they're sort of like touched up. Very, very nice. The official stills. So if you're into Hitchcock, this is a fantastic book. It's a real treat for the eyes. So I hope you're enjoying looking through these ones because they're just so good. A couple of old bits. So there's the uh, closer look at that, the paperback jackets. Very nice. I think I've got Psycho and I might have the Dell map back for Rope. But there's a few other adaptations with his covers on. A few records, soundtrack albums. There we are. So yes, I can highly recommend that one. Hitchcock poster art. I'm sure it's still in print. And it's, as I said, from the same people, as you can see, who did those other books. Now, the last one we got to look at today is this, which is only just going to fit in pictures. So let me pull the camera back just a touch. So as you can see, it's absolutely enormous, this one. It only just fits in. So I'm fingers crossed we're going to be able to have a, a decent look through. Now, this is the British edition published by Box Tree. And uh, this one was published in 2001. So it's obviously not going to have much of the recent Bond stuff in. There'll be no um, Daniel Craig, but it should go up to the end of the, the uh, Pierce Brosnan ones. And uh, I believe they are presented in order. And as it's massive, that yeah, hopefully you can see just how big this book actually is. Um, it really is enormous. And... Um, it lets you, you know, there's so much here that you may never have seen, even if you're a Bond fan. There'll be the familiar ones, and then there'll be the, uh, the the versions that you've just never seen before. And they're the ones I most love. I love these as well, where they got these, like, almost like, what well, they're not one sheets, but they're like door posters. Um, I've actually got a set of these for Reservoir Dogs originals. I don't own many original posters. I've got a lovely Pulp Fiction one, multi-signed, and I've got a Dirty Harry signed by Clint Eastwood. But I do have um, a, a multi-signed Pulp Fiction, and I've got um, I've got some Reservoir Dogs ones as well. But yeah, I quite like the long thin ones. I think they're great. And there we are. Look at these for Goldfinger. Superb, aren't they? So this is such a huge tome, really, really heavy. I don't think it's in print anymore, but it's one that is a real. You know, I love it. It's part of my Bond collection. I really, really enjoy this one. These are American door panels, they're called. You just don't see them offered for sale. Sixty-seven. This is the other Casino Royale, wasn't it? With David Niven. Ah, uh, yes, You Only Live Twice. This was uh, one of my favourite paperback artists did the You Only Live Twice, Robert McGuinness. 
friend of mine over in the States has actually got some of that original work uh, for that poster, the original artwork by Robert McGuinness or Frank, which I'm very, very jealous of. And this is my favourite Bond. It's on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Now that's the traditional British one. And then there was a variety of foreign ones here. Now there's a rather funky Japanese one, which is that one there. Now I... When this book got published, um, I had my shop and we had an account with Box Tree, and we had to send any unsold copies back. And I was able to clip that page from this very book. And what I did, I met Lazenby at the NEC show and I got that page. There we are, hopefully you can see it. I got it signed by him. So this has all been framed up and it's uh, a real nice part of my, my collection that I really, really like that. As I said, Lazenby, and this film in particular was always my favourite 60s James Bond film. I loved so much about it. I thought he was underrated. I thought Dana Rigg was fantastic and Telly Tavalis also awesome in it. So, uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you that because that's where that picture came from, from that, that Japanese uh, poster there. Yeah, really, really nice. These are the concept ones before... I guess Lazenby had been cast, or well, they'd done any official pictures with him. And we're into the James Bond from the 70s here. As I said, if you're a James Bond fan, I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Unused, there we are, unused artwork. Um, yeah, if you're a James Bond fan, this book is just so comprehensive. It's got to be the best ever on the James Bond posters yeah, that's the Robert McGuinness one and that's a Bob Peak again yeah superb what a great book this is isn't it really really is some promotional ones and you know a really good poster for a movie would be almost part of the experience of of going to the movie wouldn't it and it's just something i think that's been lost in recent years they just don't spend the money on them when they should in my humble opinion but yeah as we get up to date here so I'm pretty sure it covers the, the Brosnan ones. I've had a few of these in my hands when we had the shop. We had these and nothing particularly special. Um, and I don't think they went for good money, but they were just, they were what they were. That's nice, isn't it? That octopusy there. Where is that one? It doesn't say, oh, it's Thai. Thailand. Look at that. That looks great, doesn't it? Oh yeah, Never Say Never again. It's good that they've included Never Say Never and also uh, the 60s Casino Royale. Uh, View to a Kill. Another one that's a little bit underrated. I know it's a bit dated nowadays, but still it was great fun when it came out. That. I loved all the horse racing side of it and I love Patrick McNee in it as well. In his little, little James Bond role. living days so that was more a heart back to the original posters wasn't it that didn't get much on the more modern ones sadly these just you know that's just a cop out surely they could have got an artist in there to do that you know yes it just seems that to me it just seems a bit cheap but there we are this is the more modern poster these days isn't it We wouldn't stand for it. If it was me, I wouldn't stand for it. I would have got some got some lovely artwork produced. But there we are. So I think that's the last one. The world is not enough, which is uh, the last Brosnan. So there we are. A great book there. Absolutely fantastic book. And uh, yeah, it comes highly recommended if you can uh, if you can track it, track one of these down because it's an absolute beast. Huge, huge tome. Good stuff. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through my collection of books on movie posters. I think they're fantastic. You've had a really good gander there. And I think uh, if you're like me and you love these sorts of books, I'm sure you want to add some of these to your library.
If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button for regular vintage content like this. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.